Um, I'm briefly going to share on Mountain Moving Faith about Elisha, that the mantle of Elisha is upon us. And, and, and I believe this is an end time message. We have received a word many years ago about the mantle, the spirit of Elisha on us, but I feel that that's the end time church. And um, so when I think about Elijah, I think about his powerful proclamations, right? His supernatural provision, the Mount Carmel uh, episode that took place of the war between Baal and, and our true God, right? Resurrection of the dead. And then you have Elijah with the double portion anointing. That's for each and every one of us here. Amen. And so we have to get a revelation of this as our portion. And I know a lot, we know it, but we need to learn to walk in it. Amen. And that's where I'm at. And, and like, even what they all did, we're the, this is the saints movement, right? This is for all of us, the go of the gospel, lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead and, and minister to the leopards, inner healing. That's for all of us, as you all know, but there's a spiritual pattern for this supernatural battle. This supernatural mantle, rather. But it is a battle to get there, to enter into that place. Because the enemy, what does he do? He likes to play with our minds. He likes head games, right? Uh, Jane, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, God. Joyce Meyer, she wrote the book, The Battlefield of the Mind. We're doing a book on Wednesdays called The War in Your Mind by Craig Goshill or something like that. It's fabulous. But there's always a war trying to tell you no because the enemy is terrified of who we are because he sees the blood of Jesus on us. He sees the DNA of Christ Jesus on us. So the only way he can get to each and every one of us, and I know you know this, but it's through lies. And that if we believe those lies, right? So... Um, so there's a spiritual uh, uh, pattern here. So uh, Anna quoted this scripture, and in Malachi 4, 5, I think that's on the, uh, um, yeah, there you go. Uh, Behold, I will send you Elisha the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes, and he will turn and reconcile the hearts of the estranged fathers to the ungodly children and the hearts of the rebellious children to the piety of their fathers, a reconciliation produced by repentance of the ungodly, lest I come and smite the land with a curse and a band of utter destruction. And so this is us. And what he's talking about is when he's saying even here, uh, you know, he, he's, he's reconciling the children, the hearts of the children. That's fathers, sons, daughters. It's, it's, when you look it up, I mean, it's, it actually says members of a group. So God is reconciling. Anna spoke about that there's a generation, but we have the older generation that's fallen away too through disappointment, through circumstances in life where you just got tired of church. That religious system will wear you out, won't it? Right? It's better about the letter of the law, the do's and don'ts, but not the demonstration of the power of God. And see, it's fun serving the Lord. It's not about just like, oh, Lord, i got to go to church in the morning. Oh, God. No, it's about living the life, the supernatural life, the kingdom life. That's what it's about. When it just gets about, you know, clocking in on Sundays, I mean, that's, that's just boring to me. But God is saying we have that resurrection life within each and every one of us. And I know you know this, but we really, God is activating this in us because God is releasing this mantle. It's not even that he's releasing it. He's activating it in us to a greater level. All right, so a vital part of Elisha anointing is to turn the hearts of the children to the Father. And like Eli uh, Adriel was talking about the Father's love. And that's what the thing that turned my life around was the thing I was afraid of, but was the Father's love. You have addictions. Let me tell you something. When you get a revelation of the Father's love, it turns you and sets you free. It's the Father's love that, that while we were yet in, in our mother's womb, he, he was dreaming of us. He had his eyes upon us, desiring for us to get set free, desiring us for us to live a life of freedom. For those of us who are parents, don't you want the best for your kids? Well, that's him. He's not there like, oh, here they go again. These rebellious kids of mine, my God, when are they going to get it? That might be our attitude, but that's not his attitude. But, but again, I keep thinking of the scripture. I was thinking of it this morning, and I, I didn't get a chance to look it up in 1 Chronicles 12, where it says that David's mighty men, they had lion-like features. And that's who we are, lion-like warriors for Christ Jesus. That, that they knew how to war with their right hand and the left hand. They, when you study in 1 Samuel um, about uh, David's mighty men, they were in debt. They were discontented. They were messed up. 
like many of us, right? But God. And so, so David saw the potential, just like God sees the potential in each and every one of us. But what do we try to do? We try to focus on what's not right all the time rather than on what's good. That's not pride. It's like, wait a minute, I've been here, but the Lord brought me here. And I am one of David's mighty men, mighty women of God. I am able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that God ever you know, asks of me. But see, we have to really get that mindset and be very, very consistent and be very intentional about what God is having us do in this season. Listen, we can't be playing games any longer. We can't be in that idolatrous mode where we have one foot in the church, one foot in the world. I'm telling you, where we're going, where we're entering into, it, you're, not, you're gonna have a hard time. And we always should have been, you know, uh, serving the Lord wholeheartedly. But, but I see, I've been in church a long time. And I've seen a lot of compromise. And that's where you're miserable. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm frustrated. And you don't enjoy it. Because God never called us to live half backwards. He called us to live full on for him. And so, so anyway, so passing on a mantle, it's a spiritual birthing. It's a nurturing process within all of us, right? And so it's, it's not immature. It's not fleshly. It's not emotion-led. Because the Bible says that, that we please him with our faith. And it's impossible to please him without faith. And it never said anything about feelings. How many of us are led by our feelings? You don't have to raise your hand. Yeah, how many of us are led by our feelings and our emotions, right? But then we have to, like, calm down and get the word of the Lord and say, okay, Lord, what does your word say about this? The word of God has to have final say, and I know, I'm, I know, you, know you know this. But, again, I, am, I have been pressing into the Lord, and I said, Lord, I want my faith to be great faith. Yeah. I want that mountain-moving faith that when I speak to that thing, it moves. I'm not waiting seven days. But, see, I'm not there yet. I'm getting there. But I, I trust God. I've seen the, I've, we've seen so many miracles. But the Lord says we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. We keep moving. We keep going up and up and up higher, right? So that's, that's where I'm at. And so my, our spiritual passion also must be transferred to this next generation. You heard my husband last week. We, we, we're not despising them, but sometimes, you know, you see them with their attitude or their, uh, you know, their behavior or their mode of dress or whatever. Listen, God loves them. That was half of us half the time. Maybe we didn't look like them, but, but we had the same attitude, right? So, or my mother would say, the attitude, your attitude, it stinks from here to Patterson. I had, to, I listen, I had the attitude that I needed to get free from, you know, so that's why I have mercy on those with the attitudes. So, uh, you know, <laughs> Remember, don't forget where you came from, right? And so we, Psalm 78, 4 says that we will not hide them from their children. Amen. But we will tell them to the generation to come the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord and his might and the wondrous works that he has performed. You see? So our spiritual passion, like I said, has to be transferred, right? So Isaiah 60, 4, -5, uh, 4 through 5 says, Lift up your eyes round about you and see. And see with your spiritual eyes. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar. Hallelujah. And your daughters will be carried and nursed and nourished in your arms. All right? And that word means to uphold, to build a foundation. All right. Then you will see and be radiant and your heart shall thrill and tremble with joy at the glorious deliverance and be enlarged because the abundant wealth of the Dead Sea will be turned to you. Um, unto you shall the nations come with their treasures, you see? So, so we're, we're looking beyond. We're looking in the spirit realm. We're looking, Lord, what does your word say? We call those things which be not as though they are. We don't just say what we're seeing here. It's like it's not that you're ignoring that, but, Lord, you're greater. And you have a greater plan here. And I know what the word says. And you may have been spiritually barren in the past. You may have uh, experienced barrenness in your life, even in your prayer life. And I'm telling you, God is raising up an army of, war of prayer warriors, of those who know how to hear God, decree that thing, and it shall be established. We are all called to be intercessors. Could you not tarry with me for one hour, the Lord says. That's, that's a mandate for everyone, not just, oh, she's an intercessor. No, we're all called to pray. And so, but, but there's a glory cloud. When I was in the Philippines, we went there to, it was a prayer conference that we went to. There was a glory cloud in the building. You saw the glory cloud. I took pictures of it. 
These people were crying out and praying and worshiping unlike anything I've ever experienced. They didn't care who you were. They were there to meet with Jesus, to meet with the Godhead and for breakthrough. See, that's where America, that's what I think uh, um, Ezra was alluding to. You know, we, we can get, because of what we're used to, we can just get a little complacent in it. We can't. It's like, Lord, fire me up. In Leviticus, it says that the fire on the altar of our heart has to be burning what? Continuously. Not just every now and again. You just, you know, fan the flame. No, continuously. And that is the way that, that my God, with that zeal of the Lord that's consumed us, that causes that turnaround. And it's, listen, Elisha prayed. And um, Linnell did a wonderful job on Wednesday. Elisha prayed. Right? For how many days he was praying for that rain to come. But he stayed in that posture of prayer. And he had his servant go and keep looking and keep looking. There was no cloud up there. But he said, I see this, the cloud the size of a man's hand up there. And so, but see, that's the thing. We cannot give up because it gets discouraging at times, right? If we get all caught up in our emotions and self-pity tries to kick in. But that's the thing. He's saying, sing, O barren one. You who did not bear break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who did not travail with child for the spirit children of the desolate ones will be more than the children of the married wife says the Lord so enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitation be stretched out spare not lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you will spread aboard abroad to the right hand and to the left and your offspring will possess the nations and make desolate the cities to be inhabited hallelujah and so Elisha when he prayed over the kid who died he had a lay on top of it and stretch himself. He had to keep doing it and keep doing it. And God is stretching us in this season of our belief system. He's breaking off the limitations. Read Psalm 78. He says that the Lord was so annoyed and angry with the people because of their unbelief, the hardness of their hearts. The disciples hung out with Jesus and they had hardness of heart. Listen, we all have to check our hearts. Because it's so easy to get there. And, and, and like how many times did Jesus say, and we'll talk about it in a minute, but you have little faith. You, didn't you remember the miracles that took place? So it's easy to just be an onlooker and watch rather than, than be a doer of the word. And so God is saying, we're breaking out of barrenness. We're breaking out of barren mindsets. We're breaking out of limitations. We're breaking out of the yeah, buts. No but. Yeah, but this. Yeah, but no but. God is saying you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And that's where, I, you know, I said, Lord, there's stuff that I'm not happy with where I'm at. And he said, well, press on. Meditate on the word. He said, get into that place of worship. This isn't anything we don't know. But you shall decree that thing, like I just said, and it shall be established unto us, right? The mantle of God, of, of that Elisha uh, mantle was a symbol of God's breakout anointing. And that's what the Lord is saying. He's saying, come on, ascend, come up higher. I want you to get into that place that you are seeing yourself from a realm of seated in, in heavenly places in, in Ephesians 1.3. That we are seated in heavenly places. We're not under no devil's feet. I mean, come on. And it's like sometimes I hear, and, and it's like, you know, we're afraid of the devil. He's afraid of us. And listen, I'm not making light of what he does, but I know he doesn't like the power of the blood. That's why churches don't want to talk about the power of the blood of Jesus Christ or speaking in tongues or worshiping or decreeing the word because it takes the devil out. And that's where we as the ecclesia, the end time church, cannot be a complacent church. The people that are coming in to know Jesus need us desperately. Need the church of hope, of life, of abundant living, of breakthrough. That's what we have. That's what's within us. That's the kingdom of God. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You might think, well, who is she talking about? No, that's, that's a plan for each and every one of us. Listen, we've all had stinky situations in life, right? right. We all could be on our way to hell, <laughs> and we all could still be in that place. But we made a choice, and so today it's a choice to come out of that place of complacency. It's either you're all in or you're not. 
So anyway, so um, there, there, we have that same miracle working power that God has placed within us that Elijah had. No different. And are we ready to pick up that mantle? You might say, well, aren't I doing that already? Well, aren't, I don't know. Have you raised the dead? Um, you know, are you, are you laying hands on the sick? Or are they recovering? I mean, we, we get prayer. We have people getting healed here. And, uh, but I want to see it all the time. We, have, we, raised, we prayed over someone who died and came back to life. But I want to see it all the time. We're praying for people that we are contending for. I want to see. I said, Lord, again, this morning I was praying in the spirit. I said, Lord, I said, your delays are not your denials. We're not giving up. We want to see this manifestation of divine healing. Amen. It's like, like Elijah in that prayer posture. And he's saying, I see the, the cloud the size of a man's hand. That's what we're saying. Lord, I see that cancer the size of a man's hand being destroyed and eaten up. Lord, I see that heart issue. I see that prodigal. Look, see, we're not giving up. And that's what the tenacity that the Lord wants from all of us, that we're standing in the gap. And we're like, no, we know who we are in Christ, and we're not backing down. The enemy wants to wear the saints out, but he says, those who know their God, what shall do great exploits for him? Amen? Are you one of those saints? I am. We're going to do great exploits. That's for every one of us. That's the privilege we all have, okay? So we want that, that, um, that double portion anointing. In Luke 117. It says, uh, you're talking about uh, John here. It says, and he himself will go before him in the spirit and power of Elisha to turn back the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient and incredulous and, and unpersuadable to the wisdom of the upright, which is the knowledge and holy love of the will of God in order to make ready for the Lord a people perfectly prepared in spirit, hear me, adjusted disposed and placed in the right moral state. Amen? That's us. He's saying, listen, get the how out of here. We heard, um, what's that guy's name? Bishop Garlington say that. Get the how out of here. I'm not cussing. <laughs> how do we do this, God? How do we do this, God? But God is saying, get the how out and trust me. Amen. And trust me, he, he knows, you know, his ways in Isaiah 55, it says his ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. We can't figure him out. If we can figure him out, why do we need to pray to God? Right? So, so we need to know that he's, he's, there's a pattern that you see here, making ready a people, a living sacrifice before our God. In 1 Kings 17, 1, in the Amplified, it says, Elisha the Tishbite of the temporary residence of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew or rain these years, but according to my word. That's the authority we have. That's the power we have. That's what I'm going for. Amen. So if you want to operate in this, then it's like, you know, we have to be convinced that God has called us more than a conqueror. He says that we are, con we are courageous. He says that we are powerful. We have the El Gibor, the spirit of a champion within us. That's one of the characters. That's one of the names of God. That's who we are. And so to stand in the gap means we intercede, but we also pray for ourselves. You say, yeah, but you don't understand. My I don't, you know, listen, I'm not minimizing that. We all have had family issues. We've all had problems. But God has broken through, right? We can all have people come up here and give testimony of the miracle working power of how God broke through in all of our lives. And so we're not going to leave it there. We're not going to live on yesterday's testimonies. Come on, it's, God's word is alive. It's, it's supernatural. It's living. We have Zoe life within us. So God is calling for, to break out of the secret service Christian. God is saying, no, I, want, I don't want you to be in a secret service community. I want you to be alive and ministering to the body and to the people out there that they see the glow in the dark. Like me, Peter would always quote that scripture in the message where it says that he wants us to be glow in the dark Christians. In that darkness, they see the light of Christ Jesus within us. We have the answer. We have the answer, right? So anyway, so he's calling us to be those powerful representatives. Powerful. That's not afraid to take a stand for God. That's not afraid to stand against the woke mentality, cancer culture. The LGBT community needs us. They're just lost. 
they need breakthrough. They need that healing. They need the restoration. They need the love of Jesus Christ, right? And so not just them, any addiction, anything, any kind of struggles, but how much of the church is still living this life? The church is living this life because it's been complacent, the church at large. And so it's like we, we can't, it's, you know, God, I remember in the 90s it was all about whether you got a goosebump or you're experiencing something. Listen, there are times you're standing in faith, most of the time you're not feeling anything. It's by faith, period, right? So in 1 Kings 18, it says here, Elijah came near to all the people and said, how long will you halt and limp between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if it's Baal, follow him. And the people didn't answer him a word. That's right. They couldn't. Idolatry, all the things that the world has to offer us can't answer you. It doesn't have the answer. It might be fun for a season, but it cannot answer you. How long will you limp between two opinions? And I'm asking the church that. How long will we limp between two opinions? Either we're all in, God, you, you go, you're going for it. I don't care. I'm, I'm standing on the word. I'm trusting you, Jesus. Or, or we're straddling the fence. Where are you? I mean, we all have to look introspectively here. In the, uh, ampl just the Amplified, it says, how long will you hesitate between two opinions? And hesitation there means double-mindedness. It refers to unsteadiness in a person's decision. And see, God meets us where we're at. He, he's not, listen, if we're having a problem with doubt, he, he works with us. But we don't want to give it up. And, and that I just, I said, Lord, you are the great I am. I had a dream a couple of weeks ago. And in the dream, I was speaking to the four corners of, of the earth. And, I, and he, had, he said to me, the Holy Spirit was saying to me, declare I am. Declare I am. Declare I am. Declare I am. Well, he is the I am that I am. He's the I am who you need him to be. He is the I am of Jehovah Rapha. He is the I am of Jehovah Jireh. He is the I am of Jehovah Sinkanu, your righteousness. He is the I am of Jehovah Makedesh, the guy who's the God who's always with us. See, he is the I am who I am. El Gibor, mighty God, champion God, Elohim, master, Adonai. Oh God, that's who he is. He is the one that is always there, that never leaves us nor forsakes us. He would never abandon us. He is the I am that is there for you. He bottles up your tears and he has the hairs upon your head numbered. That's who the I am is. He's the one that will break through for you. He is the breaker in Micah. It says, I am your breaker that will break through every hidden obstacle, every drug addict kid, every person that's in bondage and, and just affected from the Lord. That's who I am. I am the I am. But he says, is your faith there to believe me for that? I am the I am that will get you out of that rotten depression that's been trying to get you spiraling down to keep you out of that place of intimacy with me. He says, I am that I am. I am that I am. I am the Christ, your Messiah. I am your deliverer. I am your healer. I am the breaker that breaks things open. That is who I am. The Lord is saying to the church, do you believe me? I am that I am that I am. Oh, Lord, you are the Holy One of Israel, oh God. We just cry out to you, oh God. Forgive us where we have not trusted in you, the great I am, oh God. You are the I am that I am. You are our healer and our deliverer, oh God. Oh, you are holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are the great I am. You are our deliverer. You are the one who has defeated the enemy. You are shalom. You are the shalom, the God of peace that crushes Satan's head. That's who he is. Woo! That's who he is. He's our God. He's faithful. Don't you ever underestimate who he is. He breaks through every obstacle. Oh, Shebra, oh, you go, Shebra. Oh, Lord, we worship and exalt your name, oh God. We worship you, oh God, the God who breaks through. Oh, Jesus. You are our Savior. You're our Redeemer. You are the I Am. You are the 
the great I am, oh God. Oh, Thank you, Lord. He can do all things. The Bible says that with me, nothing shall be called impossible. Nothing. And just like there was this time here where there was that battle that was between the two. He said, how long were you going to limp between two opinions? How long? And so what happened was, he says, you pray to your God, I pray to my God. And the God who answers by fire will break through. That's our God. He answers by fire. He breaks through the complacency. The fire burns the dross out of our life. That's the fire. That's what God wants us to live. That's how he wants us to live, to be fire-breathing Christians. Not religious, not self-righteous that look down on people, but fire-breathing where we know our God and we will do great exploits. Hallelujah. So then he said to them, hey, wait a minute. Before I call down the fire in 1 Kings 18, 30, he says, we need to rebuild our altar. And that's what we're talking about today. We're going to rebuild our altar of intimacy. He's going to say, listen, you have to rebuild your prayer time, your intimate time. You have to get a fresh download, fresh revelation. I don't care what you heard last week. What's the fresh download you heard from God? What's the fresh word that I need, that you need? And it says here, before they were able to, to, to call down the fire, he said, we have to repair the altar. And that word repair, when you look it up in the Hebrew, means rafa. It means to heal. So heal the brokenness of our heart. Heal the areas of our heart where we haven't been able to get before the Lord because we don't think God's going to answer our prayers or, or we, we've been disappointed. Some, some of us might be mad at God. It's taken too long. Or, or family issues or church issues. You know, some of you may have been hurt in church. Listen, you're going to get hurt. It's just the bottom line. We have to learn how to deal with our offenses because you're dealing with human beings. Right? It's not like we're intentional, but stuff happens. you got a family, right? You get mad at them too, right? So, um, you know, but that's the thing. It doesn't make it right, but we have to learn how to get past that and get healed. So he said, we have to repeal, repair this altar because the altar's not going to fall on man-made rules. The, the fire, rather, is going to fall on, on the direction and the strategy of Holy Spirit. So in Revelation, I'm sorry, Romans 12, 1, it says that we have to be the living sacrifice, right? Holy, true, worship, acceptable to the Lord. Lord, I'm laying myself down on the altar. And it's easy to preach it until you get mad at somebody, until you have a fight with somebody. So you don't agree with somebody. It's easy to do this, right? It's easy to just say, yes, Lord, I'm a living sacrifice. So they get on your every last nerve. But see, that's where then again, we ask God to help us and that we don't camp out there. And we don't, because remember, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the little foxes that want to keep you in that place, that messed up place of defeat because you're going to, your opinion is greater than somebody else's, right? So, so God is calling for us to rest, a restoration of the altar. And if you're not praying daily, and I don't mean like five minutes on your way to work. I mean, take your time before the Lord. We, you know what? We would always say, okay, if you pray in the car. No. That, that was then. We need to set our time aside to pray. Give him the honor. Do him. And it's between you and the Holy Spirit. But, but you need to pray. We need to hear the spirit of the Lord. We, hear, we need to hear what God is saying. Right? So God is calling us to, for this Elisha mantle. And I wrote here, the fear of the Lord, that we walk in the fear of the Lord, not fear of man, not worried about what man's going to say. Does it line up with the word? That's what I'm concerned about. That's why we have to vote. I'm, listen, I'm going to just say this. God is not Republican. He's not Democrat. He's the Lamb of God, right? And it's whoever we vote righteously, Whoever's standing for the word of God, period. Not because of color, not because of ethnicity. We vote because of who's standing righteously. And so we have a fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is that we want God to break through all the junk that's out there. My God, it's crazy. Spiritual hunger instead of complacency obedience, holiness, total trust and dependence upon the Lord, a hatred for sin, humility instead of pride, right? And so obviously they called down the fire and, and it burned up, 
you know, that what Elisha put out there and they took out the prophets of Baal, right? And that's what the Lord is doing. The, the idolatry, the prophets of Baal that have been out there, it's, you know, for them. Now, I'm not talking about human beings. <laughs> I'm talking about the spirit realm, okay? We may want, no, I'm going to kid. Anyway, so in James 5, 17, listen, it says, Elisha was a human being with a nature such as we have, with feelings, affection, and a constitution like ours. And he prayed earnestly. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to read the other scripture first. Sorry. All right, we'll go back to that. James 5, 15, and 16, and the prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick, and the Lord will restore him. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. And it says, confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart, and the earnest heartfelt prayer of a righteous man avails much, okay? Or a continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working. Okay, now. 517, Elijah was a human being with a nature such as all of us, with feelings, affections, and a constitution of ours. And he prayed earnestly, for it did not rain, and no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. And then he prayed again, and heaven supplied rain, and the lands produced its crops as usual. Elijah wasn't special. He's not any special than we are. And God has planned for you and I to have that same power through prayer. He wants us to speak to the weather. He wants us to speak over our region, to speak over our family, that our household is a house of Obedidim, a house of miracles, right? That we see ourselves and say, Lord, we have your presence here. We thank you that in this season of 5783 uh, of, the, of Gimel, it's, it's a year of abundant provision. My garden, my garden in my home is fruitful. One of the words is garden for this season. See, the Lord is speaking to us. But, do you, you know, again, it's like, okay, Lord, you're speaking to us, but what are you doing with what he's saying? Are you grabbing hold of it that, that, Lord, I believe your word. I am speaking this. I am tired of going around this mountain over and over again. He's saying, come out off that mountain. It's time for us to get off that mountain. Wherever that, if we're stuck, it's time to get off. And just say, Lord, I am going to stand here. I am standing. When you look up that word in Ephesians 6.10, where it says, when you've done all to stand, stand. That word, when you look up stand, it means to stand on the covenant promises of God. When you've done all to stand, Lord, I am standing. And I'm not budging until I see the breakthrough. Until step by step you give me the strategy. Rather than blaming everybody else for it, let's, let's take ownership of our own stuff and see, well, where are we at with our faith, right? Because God is saying to us, he wants us to develop our faith into a greater place. And so, um, and that word avail there means to have power or force and to exercise great power. So God wants us to have mountain moving faith. So let me just read this and I'm going to close. In Matthew 17, 14 through 20 in the New Living, it says, At the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus and he said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire and into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they couldn't heal him. And Jesus said, You faithless and corrupt people. How long must I be with you? Now, you think Jesus was concerned about hurting your feelings? <laughs> you know, he, he just told you where it was at, right? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. And then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy, and it left him. And from that moment, the boy was well. Afterwards, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast it out? He said, well, you don't have enough faith. Jesus told them, I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here and there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. And he said, but because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say this, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, move from here and there. I just read that. So unbelief there means unfaithfulness, mistrust, lack of faith, negative belief, lack of confidence and power. All right? So there's one thing of having doubt. It's another thing of unbelief. Doubt is we're, we're still trying to get there. Lord, I believe, but help, like that guy, help my unbelief. You know, I, I really want to get to this place of breakthrough. And so there is a faith that moves mountains. And this faith requires maturity. It requires us to grow and not stay limited with where we're at, okay? And so the Lord is calling us to grow our faith. And so faith means trust, confidence, and certainty. Listen, Elijah was walking in this. This mountain moving faith, right? And so, but he's a man like us. And so, words, our words of faith activate these seeds. 
all right? Keep speaking life over that. And so we have, there's little faith, there's small faith, and there's great faith. And so I said, well, Lord, I want great faith in every area of my life. I don't want, well, you know, I'm good here, but here I'm not so good, but that's okay. No, I want great faith, great faith. And, and it comes through meditating on the word. We can't allow our faith to grow dormant because of disappointment, because of delay. I hate delay, but God's not into delay. There's delay for a season. It tests our faith, different things. There's different reasons why we have delay, but I'm not going to allow my faith to get dormant, right? And so uh, Jesus You know, what about when Jesus got up and he spoke to the winds and he commanded them? He was asleep in the boat and the guys were all freaking out in the water. I mean, I probably would have been too. I hate being in the boat. I hate the water, you know, all that. And so he's like, again, you guys of little faith. So he wasn't that he was putting them down. He's trying to encourage them. Listen, this is where you're at. And they listen, think about it. They hung out with Jesus. They hung out with Jesus. And he's saying, listen, I this is the word of the Lord. I want to help you in this time to get to great mountain moving faith lion like creatures of the lord where we decree that thing and it shatters now it's not that it's not happening but i'm talking about this like we're seeing it like this right and so but it comes from our standing our tenacity our persistence in not giving up and not being disheartened and then we make excuses as to why it doesn't happen right and so i mean we've all been there but no more The Lord says, I am anointing you. I'm activating today the I am that I am in you, the breaker, the one who loves you with an everlasting love that wants this breakthrough more than you realize. But I want that mountain moving faith. And he says, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. This is a good thing. You can stand. Holy Spirit wants us to know that we have that mountain moving, seed breaking, anointed, courageous, more than a conqueror of faith within us. Amen? So I'm gonna pray, and then my husband's gonna share something, or you wanna share something first? Okay, so Lord, I just thank you that you said to me that you were activating the mantle of Elisha upon us. And so Lord, I say yes to you. I say yes to you. We say yes, oh God. Lord, forgive us for doubt, unbelief. Forgive us for where we've tried to understand you. We can't understand you. We just submit to you and obey you. But Lord, I thank you that you are activating the seed that's already within us. This mantle of Elisha, like, like it's, it's Jesus Christ. But I mean, I'm, what I'm talking is that he was a man like uh, us. And so it, it all comes down from Jesus. But this, this mountain moving, uh, breaker, powerful, resurrection life anointing, Father, we just thank you that you're activating it in each and every one of us. Just lay hands on yourself. Just say, I am anointed with a mantle like Elisha that breaks through, doesn't back down, back down, is courageous and more than a conqueror. And I thank you, Lord, that this is my turnaround season. I'm not just saying words. I am decreeing it. And it will be so in Jesus' name. Amen.